Hello and welcome to our information presentation for the Certificate 3 in Individual Support Aged Care Stream. This course has been designed so you can learn the knowledge and skills needed to become an aged care worker. Throughout this course, you will learn about person-centred support, safe working practices in an aged care setting, including infection control, which is essential for both aged care workers and their clients. Also, how to recognise areas of concern and how to report these. You'll gain an understanding of the best practice approaches and models and focus on additional support needs of people who experience dementia and how to work with older people with mental health issues. So let's have a look at what you may need uh, to become a successful aged care worker. We feel that the following skills and attributes are really of benefit to people who is wanting to pursue this pathway. Things like communication skills, demonstrating your initiative, being able to work in a team, be uh, good at working with other people, um, being good at problem solving, you know, being someone who is, you know, patient, resilient, supportive and res respectful. These are all pretty much transferable to many pathways that we uh, choose for employment. However, in an aged care setting, they're even more so because you are working uh, with individuals in a caring role. And there's probably one attribute here that, um, you know, if we, we look at, and that is the ability to be physically active. Uh, aged care work, you know, it includes a lot of walking, uh, squatting, uh, manual handling. Um, so that freedom of movement and the ability to uh, maintain that level of activity throughout the course of a shift is really quite important. After successfully completing this course, you'll find that there are different pathways within the industry to explore. Uh, one that we've sort of focused on here today is becoming an aged care worker. There's also that of a personal care worker or in-home sort of care assistant or an extended care assistant, a support worker. There's also the ability to uh, transfer your skills into the disability sector. Uh, to do that, uh, to gain a qualification, uh, you can actually uh, complete four additional specialised disability units. Uh, you could certainly uh, look at undertaking a nursing qualification uh, with us here at TASTAFE or through the university. Okay, so to get ready to apply for this course, uh, there's a couple of things that you will need to do. Uh, and that fits within, if you like, licensing and other requirements, which for this qualification, at time of application, you'll need to obtain a current national police check, option to an old record of aged care, which is free of serious convictions. Uh, you also need your working with vulnerable people registration. Students who are enrolled in aged care will require a current flu vaccination and up-to-date COVID-19 vaccination. All vaccinations are required by industry for work placement. So without evidence of the above, we will not be able to uh, proceed your application and enrolment into the Certificate 3 Individual Support Aged Care Stream. So it's just really important uh, if you decided that you're going to apply uh, to get, use this as a bit of a checklist of things that you'll need to organise uh, to support your application for this course. We certainly encourage you to have a discussion with us in regards to recognition of prior learning. Our conversation will be based around qualifications you may have previously studied that uh, 
Again, factors to consider when looking at any recognition will be the unit codes uh, and the qualifications that you may have already completed. We look at the prior knowledge that may assist with completing the coursework, but we certainly recommend full attendance for the course as it's delivered holistically and has information provided within the specialised context. Okay, so the course units, uh, the Certificate 3 in Individual Support is a total of 13 units of study, which consist of seven core and six elective units. Uh, the seven core are what you can see listed here. Uh, look, I won't go through each of those individually, but you can certainly also find these on the course page on the TASTAFE website. So following on from the seven core units we just had a look at. Uh, these are the six chosen elective units that will be delivered for the Certificate 3 Individual Support Aged Care Stream. In addition to the 13 units of study, there is also 120 hours of work placement that needs to be completed. Uh, it is a compulsory uh, work placement. However, for the course, the compulsory work period does not include night shifts, public holidays or weekends. Of course, you know, bear in mind if you want to gain employment in the sector, it is pretty much 24-7. So uh, you'll find that working in, in the industry will involve night shifts, public holidays and weekend hours, just not for the work placement while you're doing your studies. Okay, we're going to look now at the course entry requirements. Uh, and this is what you'll need to do as part of your application process. So there are new entry requirements and you will now need to provide the listed evidence before you commence the course. So this will need to be uploaded uh, into the student portal with your application. Um, you, we will need to be able to view an updated copy of a national police check, working with vulnerable people registration and vaccination certificates. This is to enable the early work placement schedule to be confirmed with the host employers. So it's really important, like we spoke about before, is that this is your checklist of what we need to support your application to commence, uh, to be considered for the course. So, um, go through this list. So it's part of the application process. You will need to complete the basic key skilled up builder, BKSB, uh, before starting the course. The BKSB will enable TASTAFE to ensure you have the required literacy and numeracy levels, identifying any learning gaps that you may have or to recommend relevant study support. This is completed online and this is something that we will provide you the link with as your application progresses. We'll need you to provide a current national police check. As mentioned before, it has to be option two, an old record aged care. The working with vulnerable people registration, volunteer status, a current flu vaccination, and an up-to-date COVID-19 vaccination certificate. So again, this is your to-do list. This is what you'll need to provide us to support your application for the Certificate 3 in Individual Support Aged Care. Okay, so what's expected of you? Well, number one would have to be attendance. It's in it's an expectation to attend all on campus and online sessions. Now we feel a poor attendance rate does not enable students to be ready for the practical work placement. As adult learners, you know, it's expected for you to take responsibility for learning, but also to expect supports will be put in place uh, to enable you know, individuals to reach their goals. All student interactions with others and the ability to work in a team is assessed throughout the course. It's important to demonstrate work ready skills in this area to commence that practical work placement uh, with a host employer. And um, again, you know, we want you to 
yeah, complete all the required documentation to a level acceptable for the course requirements. Um, and it's going to be, again, essential to complete that practical work placement, which is a minimum of 120 hours. Uh, but look, um, if you feel there is something holding you back or if you're struggling with something, talk to us. Uh, you know, we can't fix something if we don't know it's broken. So, you know, we have a great uh, support system in place for our students and, you know, encourage you if you do experience any barriers or difficulties to, during your studies to talk with us and we can see if we can connect you with a member of our amazing student support team. Or it could be, I uh, know, um, that you, uh, for online sessions, you know, you can actually study on our campus through our libraries that we have here um, and you can access those services here on campus. So main thing is that we want you to succeed and uh, in order to do that, you know, please talk to us if you're having any areas of concern um, so that we can work through any uh, barriers and overcome them together. So just following on from the expectations we have uh, in regards to attendance and the reason that is so important is that this course is a combination of, if you like, on campus and online learning. However, it's structured learning. It's not self-paced uh, sort of or flexible in that, in that regard. Um, so it is a combination of online and on campus, but it's structured and timetabled. So it's definitely not self-paced. Um, and again, along with the uh, compulsory class attendance and the structured online learning, we do recommend you know, setting aside an additional six to eight hours per week of study for research and completion of your assessments. Uh, assessments are designed to help you demonstrate the skills and knowledge you learn in your course and are an essential part of your training. Assessments allow us to confirm that you can perform the task to the standard required within the workplace and that you can meet all of the requirements of your course. So while you know studying here, you may at TASTAFE, you'll be assessed in a number of different ways. Some common assessment methods include completing workplace documents, observations on the job and or perhaps in a simulated assessment environment, quizzes like multiple choice, uh, research projects, verbal questioning, uh, we could ask for work samples to be provided and written assessments or short answers. Now, students who don't complete progression milestones during a course will be invited to attend a meeting with the teacher you know, to discuss their progress. And again, it's uh, if you do, like we mentioned before, experience any uh, challenges or finding something to be of a particular barrier to your studies, uh, please uh, talk to us so that we know how best to support you. So just to recap, this course is delivered to you through a few different learning styles. Uh, we've already spoken about on-campus classes. There will be structured online learning. There's also going to be project work. Um, you'll be working within groups. You'll be undertaking some presentations. Uh, there will be, of course, the practical assessment activities and, as we've already discussed, the 120 hours of compulsory work placement. Okay, so let's have a look at the timetable. Our daytime classes are typically scheduled between 9am and 3pm. Again, learning is delivered via on-campus and structured online, so your attendance is essential at, at those classes. Uh, you will be given your full timetable at the commencement of the course. Work placement comprises of one day a week for 10 weeks, plus another two weeks, that'll be Monday to Friday at the end of the course. Work placement hours must equal at least 120 hours and successful completion of workplace assessment tasks. Um, so this certificate's three individual support program is offered as a 
full-time course, so it's across 17 weeks, uh, five days of teacher-facilitated blended, blended learning on campus or online. There will be you know, two lots of work placement throughout the course. Uh, and you know, note we provide mixed mode delivery. And again, scheduled classes must be attended. Those structured online courses that I've talked about a lot today, they're not recorded. So it's essential uh, that you attend those all courses as per your timetable. And our intakes for individual support are going to be delivered at the following campus locations. We have Devonport Campus in the northwest, Allenvale Campus in the north, and based at Clarence Campus in the south. As mentioned, it's a full-time course. This course would be delivered five days per week. So it'll be Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The course will commence on the 3rd of July and complete on October the 31st. Uh, work placement round one will be one day per week uh, and that will be from the 1st of August through to the 13th of October. Um, get there like communities lifestyle and then on um, the second round we have for work placement will be five days per week and that will be from the 16th of October to the 27th of October for residential aged care. So again, work placement days may vary in region and is dependent upon the industry. Okay, workplace requirements. All students must undertake a minimum of 120 hours of work placement in aged care. Work placement is a compulsory component of this course and students must attend all shifts as stipulated by the facility or host employer that they are attending. Placement includes a combination of 7am to 3pm and 3pm to 11pm shifts. All shifts will be scheduled on weekdays. There will be no overnight, weekend or public holiday shifts. Your responsibility for work placement uh, requirements are that you manage your home time and other commitments so you can attend the placement shifts as allocated. You need to organise your own transport to and from your allocated facility. Have that national police check and working with vulnerable people registration. Ensure you have all the immunisations required for aged care. Organise your own childcare if that's applicable uh, for you. Our responsibility is to organise the work placement. So again, um, this uh, for work placement, this is what you'll need uh, should you gain employment within the industry. Uh, so it's going to be essential that you can manage and provide evidence of these as well. So just that reminder that working in the aged care industry is, can be physically demanding. Uh, you'll find that you might need to stand for long periods of time. There's going to be that need to move and use lifting equipment. Um, you'll need to be able to feel that you can undertake repetitive physically physical work over you know, an eight hour shift. Uh, it's just good to have that awareness of that physical aspect of the role. It certainly doesn't stop you from applying. Uh, you know, these are the skills that you will need to develop um, to undertake these duties of an individual support worker. Course fees. Uh, the good news is Certificate 3 in Individual Support in Aged Care is tuition for fee free as it is part of fee free TAFE. So that means there are no tuition fees if you are eligible for fee free TAFE to check your eligibility and for other frequently asked questions regarding fee free TAFE, please visit our website www.tastafe.tas.edu au there you'll find out all the information you need to about fee free TAFE. Please note though uh, it um, does not cover items such as materials, uniform or checks and licenses that you may require. Okay so to look at those additional fees. Okay 
So as mentioned, um, whilst the tuition fees will be covered if you are eligible under fee-free TAFE, there are associated costs for this course. We have provided you an approximate of those costs. Um, so there are costs associated for the um, national police check that you will need to have done as well as you're working with vulnerable people card unless you already have a current card. Uh, there is a course resource fee of $50. You will need to purchase a TAS TAFE black polo shirt of $40 uh, and there is a textbook although it's not compulsory but if you purchase that textbook it is $95. You'll also need to supply your own pair of black or navy trousers to ensure that you have black closed in shoes and again as mentioned you are required to provide evidence of a flu vaccination and your COVID up-to-date COVID-19 vaccinations. So we've certainly covered off a lot of information about the course today and if you're keen to proceed with an application, the applications will be opening on the 17th of April. Uh, these are open via our website online at www.tastafe.tas.edu.au. Um, we also suggest if you haven't enrolled with us before, um, please visit the Apply and Enrol page on our website to watch a presentation. Uh, this can assist you with knowing what to do for and how to apply and navigate around our application portal. Uh, and once you've submitted all your application, we'll advise you of the outcome and, or if we need further information from you in order to progress it further. We are really fortunate to have such a great student support team on board here at TAS TAFE. So if you need assistance or support during your time here at TAS TAFE, uh, we have literacy and numeracy support teachers, we have student counsellors, we have Aboriginal support officers, disability liaison officers that can assist you. They will in offer a range of student services, including study skills, advice about financial assistance, some counselling and career planning. Thank you for watching our presentation on the Certificate 3 in Individual Support in Aged Care. If you have any more questions following this presentation, please email us at health.admin at tastafe.tas.edu.au. Thank you.